In order to make the scene effect more realistic, we will add a change of day and night time. Let the player feel the passage of time through the changes of light and shadow. Select the light node and press the W key. Then adjust the rotation value of the light node in the inspector window on the right. We found that the X value from 0 degrees to 180 degrees represents daytime. 180 degrees to 360 degrees represents nighttime. You can add light sources to the street lights beside the basketball court according to the actual situation. Then, automatically turn on the street lights at night and automatically turn off the street lights during the day. Let's write a script to control the rise and fall of the sun. Create a new script and name it Sun Controller. Double click to open. Mount this script on the light node. In this script, declare three member variables. They are used to record the movement speed of the sun, the angle of the sun's rotation, and the quaternion of the sun's initial rotation position. Then, in the onStart method, get the initial rotation value of the sun. Then get the initial rotation angle of the sun. Finally, in the onUpdate method, control the rise and fall of the sun. Calculate the rotation angle of the sun. If the rotation angle is greater than 360 degrees, subtract 360 degrees. Set the calculated angle as the rotation value of the light node. When we test, we can set the rotation speed to a larger value. Save. Run and test. After testing, the effect is reasonable. We can add a setting UI so that players can set the speed of the sun's movement. First, import the prepared image material. Then open the main interface UI. Copy the camera node to get a child node. Change the name of the child node to day and night settings. Modify its position and image. Standardize the naming of other nodes. Modify the control script at the same time. At this time, we found that the corresponding dialog box pops up when the three buttons on the main interface are clicked. We can unify them and pass a window name when publishing the event. This can not only reduce the types of events, but also avoid repeating similar operations when adding buttons later. It is also convenient to hide other dialog boxes when a dialog box pops up. Next, let's refactor the previous code. 
comment out the previous related design first. Then, add an event for popping up a dialog box in the event type. After that, in the control script of the main UI, add event listeners to each button. When these buttons are clicked, publish the event of the pop-up dialog box. The parameters passed are the names of the dialog boxes to be popped up. Then modify the sound control script and the camera setting control script. First add a dialog name to each dialog box. Get the name of the dialog box in the onStart method. For subsequent convenience, we set the node name of the button in the UI to be consistent with the node name of the dialog box to be popped up. Let's first modify the dialog box display and hide logic in the sound control. Comment the original dialog box display and hide method. Add event subscription and publishing logic. Next, improve the dialog box switching method. If the name of the dialog box passed when publishing the event is consistent with the current dialog box name, then display the current dialog box, otherwise hide the current dialog box. Finally, modify the error reporting area. Make the current dialog box hidden when clicking the close button. In addition, we have moved the setting button to the main panel UI and can comment it out. Save. Run and test. It is found that the music dialog box can be popped up and closed normally, and the control of background music and sound effects is normal. The following modification of the pop-up and closing of the camera dialog box is the same operation. First, Copy the method of switching the dialog box in the sound effect control script. Then, add the logic of event subscription and unsubscription. Then comment out the original dialog box display and hide method. Then the place where this method was called before will report an error. After modification, make sure that clicking the close button can close the current dialog box. Save. Run and test.
After testing, the functions of the camera setting dialog box are normal. However, students who love to think will definitely find a problem. There is code redundancy here. Now this approach requires almost the same code in almost all control scripts of pop-up dialog boxes. For example, the method of switching dialog boxes here, such as event subscription and unsubscription here. Smart students must have thought of a way. We can put all the nodes of pop-up dialog boxes under the main interface UI node as its child nodes. And select these dialog nodes to hide them all. Then in the control script of the main interface UI, traverse all its child nodes. When clicking the main interface button, hide all UI nodes first, and then display the corresponding dialog node. In the main interface control script, we create a method to hide all dialog boxes. In this method, traverse all child nodes under the current node and set its enable attribute to false. Write another method to display the corresponding dialog box according to the dialog name. Then, write a method to switch dialog boxes. Implement switching dialog boxes according to the dialog name. In this method, call the method to hide all dialog boxes and display dialog boxes according to the dialog name. After that, in the main interface control script, when the button is clicked, there is no need to publish the event. Just call the method to switch dialog boxes directly. In the event enumeration class, the event of pop-up dialog boxes can also be removed. After commenting out this event, an error will appear in the control script for dialog box settings. Modifications are required. Let's modify them one by one. Comment out the previous event subscription and unsubscription related code. The event listener of the close button should also be modified. At the same time, you need to modify each pop-up dialog box UI to display them all. Save. Run and test. The dialog box pops up and closes normally. The functions of each button in the dialog box are normal. Finally, we need to make a UI that allows players to control the speed of the sun rising and setting. To control the speed of time passing. While holding down the CTRL key, drag the UI controlled by the camera. Make a copy. Change the name of the copy to the same as the name of the relevant button in the main interface UI. Modify the UI interface.
After modification, save. Then, drag this UI to the main UI node, in the hierarchy window on the left to get a child node. Hide the pop-up dialog box node. Select all UI nodes, and set their hierarchy to UI. Then, copy camera set controller to get a copy. Name the copy sunseat controller. Used to control the speed of the sun's movement. Double-click to open and modify according to actual conditions. When the speed of the sun rising and falling changes, relevant events need to be published. Pass the speed value represented by the slider. After modification, mount the script to the day and night settings node. Then, we modify the range and default initial value of the slider value in the UI. Finally, in the Sun Control script, subscribe and unsubscribe to the corresponding events. Save. Run and test. After testing, it was found that the light and shadow changes caused by the change in the speed of the sun rising and falling were normal. Now, there is still one function left for the automatic switch of the solar street light. First, we add a light source to the street light, the ND then make the street light into a prefab. When adding a light source, we can switch the perspective to adjust the position of the light source. You can also adjust the light source effect in the running state. After adjustment, copy the property value of the light component. 
Then exit the running mode and paste it back. Here we will only make the light sources at the four corners of the basketball court for the time being. After completion, you need to use the script to control the automatic closing of the light. First, in the sun control script, determine whether it is day or night according to the rotation angle of the sun. Store the data of whether it is night in game data. Then, create a new script and name it Light Controller. Mount it on all light nodes.
Double click to open the light control script. Add a member variable to save the light component. Get the light component of the current node in the onStart method. Then in the onUpdate method, decide whether to turn the light on or off based on whether it is night. Save. Run and test. During the test, we can adjust the sun's rising and falling speed to the fastest. Found that the lights turn on and off normally. So far, we have realized the sun's rising and setting in the east and the street lights. Automatic switching. In addition, the pop-up dialog box in the game has been optimized. Later, you can consider adding shooting props to the game.